<laughs> We're all happy. Um, all right, up next, uh, we have uh, Senator uh, McClellan and Senator uh, Wexton, Senator Favola. You all have a version of uh, what is a family life bill and also Senator Servell. Um, and this, the committee will operate by motions, as always. There is uh, a substitute that I hope all of you have seen that I think a lot of you are good with, uh, and there may be some on the committee that are not, but it does basically take almost all the information in the bills, and it consolidates them into a single bill, so we have a single policy coming out of the uh, committee. So with that, uh, Senator McClellan, why don't you uh, describe uh, your bill, and then we'll talk about the substitute, even though it'll be handed out, but we'll understand the substitute before we vote for it. So um, welcome. Sure. So this is Senate Bill uh, 101. Uh, you recall last year we added to um, the Curriculum for Family Life Education uh, information um, information about the long law of consent, uh, including that consent is required for sexual activity. What this bill would do, but when we passed that bill, it was permissive. Um, this bill would make that mandatory. It doesn't make FLE mandatory. That's still permissive, but it would make the uh, information about consent uh, being required for sexual activity mandatory. And here's the reason for it. The intent of this bill really was that once, um, once you start teaching sex ed, uh, you really need to make sure that, that the high school students know sex without consent is a crime. Virginia has made a public policy statement that anyone eight, under the age of 18 by law cannot consent to sex. It, it, there are criminal penalties for that. The younger the child, the higher the penalty. Uh, but a lot of our students don't know that. A lot of our students need to know that. Um, and I think what the past year has shown us is um, it is very important that we start teaching this now. Uh, because I think what we've seen in the past year with a high number of reports of sexual harassment in some cases, sexual assault. Um, we really need to let our students know when they start learning sex ed that sex without consent is sexual assault, and you can go to jail for it. And that's the bill. Senator, we really appreciate you coming forward uh, with the bill. We, we did work with you last year. There's been a couple of word changes uh, in her section of the bill. Yes. Basically, it is now located on line 21, and it speaks about the consequences of non-consensual sexual activity, conduct, and touching. And I think you're okay with that yes. uh, small, small change. So yes. with that, uh, let us hear from some of the other senators, and then the committee will decide whether they want to move forward with that or the, the substitute. So Senator Saravell, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Mine's Pretty simple. Mine simply asked that uh, children, as part of family life education, also be educated about sexting. Um, sexting is a huge problem. Um, a lot of uh, children don't understand that when you send a naked picture of yourself to another child, it's actually a fi felony. It's uh, the creation of child pornography, and even having it on your phone as a possession is a felony. And um, it's. Uh, uh, I can get further into it, but I attended a conference about it, on it about a year ago, and I think one of the best things we can do to prevent this from happening is engage in more education and prevention instead of trying to deal with it on the back end, where our, our educators and administrators in schools are having a really hard time just even figuring out how to deal with it when they discover it. And so th that's all my bill does. And uh, it's also something the Department of Education is pretty much have already, they're already starting to do as part of the guidelines. Perfect. Senator Servell, um, as you know and you've seen, I'm sure, on line 23, basically we picked up uh, your language and, uh, and, and moved forward with it. Right. I, I appreciate you bringing it forward to us. I think it'll be uh, helpful as we move forward to uh, right. try right. to educate our young people. M Mr. Thank President, you. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Peterson. Um, and this is a question maybe more for Senator McClellan, but when we talk about non-consensual <coughs> sexual activity, would that include statutory rape? Because we have, I mean, someone who's 14 years old can consent to have sex with someone who's 16 or 17 years old, and that's illegal. And we have situations where those children 
are going to jail and being branded a registered sex offender for the rest of their lives for activity they might not realize is illegal. Right. Well, that that's the whole point, actually. Um, any sexual activity with someone under 18 is a crime, and so that includes statutory rape. So, so that would be included in non-consensual? Yes, because by law, if you're under 18, you can't consent. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, and Senator Wexton has deputized me to address hers. Um, and okay. I think her, her bill is on lines 25 to 26, and that is to include uh, information on the prevention, recognition, and awareness of child abduction, child abuse, child sexual exploitation, and child sexual abuse. Um, again, age appropriate. Again, here, um, I think it's very important that, that we begin to teach our children how to understand when somebody is exploiting them or when some, you know, what to do if they might be in that situation and, and um, how to avoid it and what to do if you might be abducted. And um, I know there are some organizations, including the Boy Scouts, that are starting uh, to address this information, but not all of our children uh, in, in our schools are in organizations that are getting this information. They're not all getting it from home. And sometimes, um, you know, just being aware of, of what the dangers are can help save them from falling into those dangers. Thank you for it. And we appreciate the work of Senator Wexton as well. Also, Senator Favola, um, you also had your bill. And if it's okay with everyone, and we'll see what the committee does, but we were thinking about uh, making uh, Senator Wexton, Senator Servell, and Senator Favola chief co-patrons if we merge them together. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just briefly looked at the substitute that I believe is before the committee, and I did not see the language that I would like added to the, the family life um, education program section of, of the code. Um, you know, the standards of learning in a curriculum uh, has been developed by the Department of Ed, and we identify the different topics that will be covered under family life. And in my bill, I merely add the words medically accurate information um, relating to the discussion on human reproduction. So. Senator, Senator Favola, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, we, we, we were kind of looking for you, but we didn't know what problem it was trying to solve. In other words, what is the medically inaccurate information? Maybe you can help us uh, with, that, uh, with that information. Well, I do believe that the Department of Ed, and I think Cindy Cave is here, does, they, the Department of Ed has created a curriculum that does have um, some medically accurate information. I hope all of it is medically accurate, but I was merely putting that into statute so we don't ever risk the fact that evidence-based or medically accurate information would not be part of the curriculum. Right. So it's, I'm not creating something new. I'm articulating a value that okay. we, when we talk about this, we've got to be fact-based. We were understand. Thank you. I, I, we didn't quite get that uh, nuance, but it's very helpful to understand. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, are there those that are here to speak in support or in opposition to the, uh, the bills? Welcome. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Victoria Cobb. I'm the president of the Family Foundation. Um, there's some, some valid concepts in here and important things to teach. Um, the bill's treated very differently, the issue of age appropriateness. And so what we want to make sure is that age appropriateness runs the entire gamut of every new concept that we're putting into here. Um, as you might imagine, I have children from 4 to, to an 11-year-old, you know, girls and boys. How I teach things like consent and how I teach things like sexting would be very different uh, on the low ends of those and the others. FLE, I appreciate um, Senator McClellan's point about high schoolers, but FLE is taught at different ages in different localities. So we want to ensure that age appropriateness is contained throughout every new concept we're putting in here. Thank you. Okay. Um, we appreciate that. We The discussions that uh, were had, I think, uh, with all the patrons, everyone wanted the age appropriateness to continue. And Tom, if you can just look to make sure that that, which I think all the patrons are hopefully in favor of, is, uh, is cleaned up in the code. But I think it's there. We, it, it, we it actually it there. It is in there. If you look at um, line 16 and line 22, uh, includes age appropriate. Uh, that was our hope yeah. when we put the substitute together. So I think it's still there. But anyway, others that are here speak in favor of the bill or in opposition? Yes, welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm Kathy Bircher with the Virginia Education Association, and we support this bill and the substitute. Great. Thank you for your help. Hello, welcome. Hi. 
Um, Chairman Newman and members of the committee, my name is Ariana Shahidi, and I'm a senior in, um, in Richmond City Public Schools. I support Senate Bill 843 that requires medically accurate uh, sex education for students like me because two years ago I went through the sex education program at my own school, and um, in class we lacked um, open, an open and informative updated discussion about topics related to sex. The focus was mainly on sexually transmitted diseases, while incredibly important, shouldn't be the sole focus because topics such as birth control, sex, and um, consent are very critical as well. Even worse, uh, my friends in the LGBTQ community were completely ignored as well. The only information we received was about boys having sex with girls, and that's not right at all. So I respectfully ask that the members of this committee to take a small step forward and pass Senate Bill 843 uh, to require school systems to teach medically accurate sex, sex education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Others are here speaking in favor or in opposition. Welcome. Hi, my name is Shayla Lothay. I'm a high school student at Henrico County Public Schools and a constituent of Senator Donovan. I just wanted to say that I'm in favor of this bill. Thanks for coming by. Yes, sir. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, uh, committee members, Jonathan Glacius with the Virginia Sexual and Domestic Violence Action Alliance, we are in support of this bill. Um, we see this as a much needed sexual assault prevention measure, um, and we see this as an expansion that brings us up to speed with the 28 other states that already require um, consent education, and the 18 other states, including the District of Columbia, that include um, that medically accurate language. So. Perfect. Thank you for coming. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Mr. Chair and committee members, Jennifer Allen with Planned Parenthood Advocates of Virginia and speaking in support of this bill and the substitute as long as medical accuracy is included in the substitute. Right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So Senator Wexton, as you recall, uh, Senator McClellan did a fantastic job describing your portion. Would you like to say anything else? No, Mr. Chairman, I don't think I could possibly agree. On what she said. Well, thank you for working with us on the uh, on the substitute. Um, very good. If there's no one else yet left to, to speak, um, the what is before you, I'll take some responsibility or, or blame for it. But it is a, a bringing together of most of the provisions. Uh, Senator um, Favola's uh, uh, item wasn't in there because we thought that it was currently medically accurate information. Uh, but we do have all the information from Senator Wexton and Serville and uh, also McClellan. So with that, uh, Senator, would you like to? I, um, Mr. Chairman, I would just uh, ask the committee's indulgence to, to uh, literally state that med medically accurate be part of the statute, just as we have abstinence, um, which had been part of the curriculum, but the committee had made a policy to choice to, to uh, articulate abstinence education. I think it would be a wise policy okay. choice to articulate medically accurate. Perfect. Thank you, Senator. So if we go down through it um, and someone else have to make the motion, basically we have uh, incorporated the elements of uh, elements uh, of uh, evidence-based uh, information, which we hope got a bit to Senator uh, Favola's information. We also got to the uh, dangers and repercussions of using social media, which is um, Senator Surveil. Uh, we also got to Senator um, McClellan's uh, uh, mandate, uh, which is the only part of the bill that actually mandate, and then uh, we also uh, have in here Senator Wexton's bill, which is the last part of the bill. Um, With Mr. that, is there a motion? I, I have a question. Have we adopted the substitute? No, we were just kind of talking about it before okay. we adopted. If right. there's a motion, it would be whether and which bills we roll in. Right. So is there a motion on the bills? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Go ahead. I would move that we roll all those bills except for Senator Favola's bill into 101 and vote on them. Uh, so you want to also include Favola's bill as yes. well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So there's a motion that we roll all the bills together into Senator McClellan's bill, which is Senate Bill 101. All those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those no. Before you is the substitute. Is there a motion on the substitute? Uh, move the substitute. So motion is second that the substitute be agreed to. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no and the substitute is agreed to. Um, Tom, is there any technical amendments that are needed in the substitute? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I might add a couple of Romanettes just to make sure that incorporate age-appropriate elements of effective and evidence-based programs follows to both uh, the prevention of dating violence and the consequences of non-consensual. So all of it will be age appropriate. Okay, any opposition to that? Hearing none, is there a motion on the substitute? Move the substitute. 
There's a motion to second that Senate Bill 101 be uh, agreed to. All those in favor will vote aye. Opposed, no. Clerk will close the roll. Yes, 13, nays 1. Days 13, days 1, and the bills are agreed to. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. I, I have another no, one, I but I don't know if you want to do that now or later. You have another bill? Yes. That's right, you do. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was, I didn't, it looked like I didn't vote. Please just put me on as, as a, an affirmative vote. Okay. Do we need to Thank do you. that, or do we need to uh, help by, uh, by recording the vote? We don't mind reconsidering for the senator. Is that okay? Sure. All right. All those in favor of reconsidering the vote by which we passed, I think it was 101, mm -hmm. will record, will say aye. aye. I'll oppose no. And the bill is back before us. Is there a motion on the bill? There's a motion and second that the bill as amended in the substitute be reported. All those in favor will record their votes aye. Oppose no. And the clerk will close the roll. Yes, 12, nays, 3. All right. Uh, with a 12 to 3 vote, the substitute is uh, approved. Sir McClellan, thank you and welcome back. Sure. Uh, thank you, Senator.